And welcome to another episode of The Bandit Room. My name's Charles. In the studio today is Aggie. What's up? And Mr. Caleb. Hey. Uh, so we're back. Got Aggie was missing last week. He was on a little trip to Dallas. That go well? It went fantastic. I've had three different uh, meetings from the time I've come back. For some reason, all three of them said they're like completely different companies placed in different parts of the country. During the initial conversation, all three of them asked me, how was your vacation in Dallas? <laughs> I'm like, I was what? not on vacation. I wasn't even gone for <laughs> So, but how do they know I was on vacation? I know that we put some pictures up on social media for tax bandits. Uh, so we went to the convention. Maybe the photos looked like we were on vacation, but I definitely was not on vacation. 100% business sure. trip. Yeah, and you don't really do the out of office replies either. So that's no, I don't do that. Not I'm, like not, I'm not Jason Ackerman. <laughs> Oh, I should say Shout that. out to <laughs> Jason Ackerman. <laughs> Jason, obviously, our very talented Mr. CPA. Yeah, BNA CPA. Yeah, Jason was uh, at a CPA conference, and I was at a conference called Sage Summit for Sage. As you folks uh, would know, that um, we've been selected by Sage to be their exclusive e-file provider for tax bandits. So it's big news. So we're just there to represent tax bandits. And I went to my first uh, country music concert <laughs> is okay. that the correct way to say it country music concert yeah who yeah. was it yeah. hold on i have to think about the name <laughs> <laughs> walker hayes that's his name so i looked him up before the concert when they said oh you know we had to leave they were doing a sound check so i went to look to uh, looked it up he had two hit songs about one is called aa which is very catchy is it literally aa is the name yeah of the song? apparently he's recovering okay He's been sober for the last seven years since he went to a meeting, and it was pre- it's a pretty catchy song. It was pretty little, good. A little bit of a trope for country music, probably singing about drinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not drinking. Not drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. But the cool part was he walks in, and uh, first thing he says, you know, y'all, what's going on? And then he goes, I gotta tell you something, uh, something honest that just happened to me. I took my very first private jet. So that was pretty. I was like, ah, oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, it was a good concert. Was he like? Was that part of the conference? Yeah. Okay. That yeah, was yeah. the the show for so Sage the last night. The yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe next time that's how you'll get there. Say what? Maybe the next time that's how you'll get there. <laughs> 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 no. When we go to the truck show, they have always they always have a concert. Yeah. 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 But it's in a big stadium mm-hmm. and like thousands of people there, and we never go to that. But this one, we had dinner right there. And then, boom, he just walked into the stage. And we could just walk right up to him in the front. Very cool. It was like 500 or 600 people there. Nice. Caleb just had to start the podcast. Before we start, he already wanted to put me in a bad mood here. And his question was, have you seen Top Gun yet? <laughs> have you seen it yet? Have you seen it yet? Caleb's seen it like three times now. Four times. No, four times. <laughs> but <laughs> did you watch it on IMAX yet? No. I doubt that it's still an IMAX though. Oh no! Uh, what, what, what? What? Probably because of Jurassic World just came out. Uh, um, the oh, third one. It's only there for. So I would guess it's not, but I, I don't know for sure. Oh man! So I, I'm looking forward to going watching that, and mm-hmm. then I've been seeing um, previews or commercials for Elvis. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I would yeah. like to go see that one too. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. yeah. It's that Baz Luhrmann doing that one. He did the uh, it is. Yeah. So Caleb. years ago, this is long time ago. Caleb mm-hmm. was probably not born yet, but probably. I happened to. When I was working on cruise ships, someone said we should watch this tape. You know, we had like a crew video library on board, and apparently the tape had just arrived, and they were all fighting to watch it. It's an Elvis concert, Aloha from Hawaii. <laughs> one of the live first live te- telecast con- uh, concert or something. Oh, yeah. I said, sure, we'll watch it. So we had you know, obviously people had been drinking, and then I started watching that on the little. I think the TV was like a 20-inch TV then, <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, that's the first time I've seen you know tape of his concert I was like blown away by this guy mm-hmm. he's an artist and he, he's an entertainer yeah and I was kind of hooked on Elvis for some time before I got hooked on Shakira <laughs> <laughs> well he, he's a precursor to <laughs> he's a precursor as far as uh, wild shaking on television <laughs> <laughs> I said okay I get it. <laughs> that looks like an interesting one I, I like the, I like Elvis man I like the avenue they're pursuing with making uh the Tom Hanks character, he plays the uh, the colonel, who's sort of uh, Elvis's manager later in his career. And it's an interesting avenue to take on it. I've heard, and I don't know if this is for sure, but apparently the movie is sort of told from Tom Hanks's character's perspective. Oh, uh, is he the narrow? Okay. Yeah, instead of Elvis's, which hmm. is an interesting hmm. choice. 
very curious know. as to what his take is because I've always viewed that character as sort of responsible for Elvis's career making some bad choices like he right. only was interested in money and he put him in all these movies that are not any good and, and just sort of pulled him away from being a singer and uh, tried to recast him as a sort of a Hollywood icon which I don't think any of those r- films really stood the test of time I don't know but mm. <laughs> But I would be interested in seeing that. Oh, I'm going to check it out. I yeah. probably will make an effort sometime next week. Do they play the movies? Like, how late do they go? I, uh, I don't think I can go during the daytime. Yeah, usually till like 7 or 8 o'clock. Somewhere. Do they have movie theaters here where they serve you drinks and food and stuff? Uh, There's a few around Charlotte, yeah. Uh, oh, we have to go to Charlotte? Not the one in Rock Hill, no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Just popcorn and soda. <laughs> yeah. Candy. Yeah. Do they have movie theaters here like they have in India where it's lay flat seats? Not in Rock Hill. The one in pretty much all the AMC ones in Charlotte. Uh-huh. Uh, they have reclining wow. seats. Yeah. Um, Do they have movie theaters here in Charlotte where they come and rub your shoulder when you're watching movies? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. Oh, okay. You got <laughs> to organize that on your own. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. We had an episode with Miss Glanville here talking about lizard men. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. It was on news last week on Saturday mm. that they found in Texas somewhere. Some some mysterious character looks like one of those lizard men. Oh yeah, in Amarillo. On, yeah, that's right. There you oh, go. You heard about that. So I told Stephanie uh, we were waiting at the airport, yeah. and I said they, uh, she thought I was you know making fun of her. <laughs> I said no, I didn't, it's a saw that. <laughs> so we had to pull it up and. Oh yeah, I saw this. Yeah, yeah. It, it's um, sort of a Sasquatchy kind of thing. Yeah. Is outside of a zoo. Funny enough, so it was that's some right, weird that's right, creature. Yeah. A zoo cam caught it on night vision. And it's a two-legged creature, kind of looks wolfy. <laughs> Footage of peculiar figure outside his gates. Outside the Amarillo it, Zoo. It literally looks like a like a wolf or a fox. Just like, I mean, definitely human-shaped, though, as far as legs and I arms. I think some guy just put a mask on yeah. to come and steal something. Yeah. Or maybe come to clean the zoo in the night. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or this is something he knew was going to happen. Amarillo Zoo needed some publicity. So, so right after that, I read the story about... Um, some of the politicians blaming the gun violence in this country on I, I mean, it's not connected to that. This yeah, story, it, it, it was just I it, was flipping through news Texas waiting at the airport. Is the connection? Yeah, so that just came up. All these politicians saying, you know, oh, be- kids are shooting up people with guns because they're playing too many video games and spending too many too much time watching porn and whatever. Video else. games, movies, video games, sort of movies, violence influence. Yeah, but then I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Right next door, Canada has the same t- amount of video games and porn and whatever else they were blaming it on. Mm-hmm. How come they don't have the same amount of gun deaths? Right, right. What is the reason for that? That's a good question. Is it access to guns or is it? are we just worse people? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a question that we, someone needs to ask them yeah. at one of these press conferences. Mm-hmm. Like, so what's, your, what's the reasoning for that? Mm-hmm. It's uh, kind of a skewed view of American exceptionalism. We're just exceptional at that. We need to figure that out. Like, what what's the reason for this? So, obviously, guns have something to do with this. Yeah, I think that, what do they say? Ease of access has got to be a major thing. Uh, right. Actual restrictions on purchases, you know, it's got to be another one. Mental health, of course, is always a factor. I mean, anybody who commits an act like this clearly has some sort of a mental health situation and i think the crazy thing is that there's totally um, among actual people everybody's blown away by it you know everybody's the statistics indicate that most gun owners would be happy with a little bit of regulation that know, is correct yes to um, me I'm, I'm talking as a gun owner right right i, I have a concealed weapon permit you right. know i own multiple guns mm-hmm. um i have no problem in having to go through a background check or a waiting time period mm-hmm. or um, whatever that needs to be, that's, I don't see yeah. a problem with that. Most people that I know who own guns are of the same view. Mm-hmm. But then you always come across one crazy one that's like, oh, I can, I should be able to buy. And I know people who own like 60, 70 guns, and mm-hmm. I have no idea yeah. why they need 60, 70 guns. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have no idea what they're going to do with them. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because you have all sorts of rights and all sorts of uh, restrictions on those rights. I mean, you have, you're free to drive down the road but you do have to put your seatbelt on you do have to obey by the speed laws and all these sorts of things so i don't understand why you know you can't have a little bit of regulation to uh, right. to something to, to make it safer for everybody so so now ohio just passed the law i think the governor signed that yesterday you don't need to have a concealed weapon permit to 
carry a gun. Hmm. Anyone can without any permit. That's wild. Okay. So how do you? So that's, that seems like a <laughs> step in the wrong direction. <laughs> I would say so, but I have no. I, I still have to find a solid explanation from someone. Why do you need to have passed that law mm-hmm. where anyone can walk around with a concealed weapon permit? Doesn't matter if they're mentally stable or not. Yeah. That it is really odd. I mean, what is it? The actual terminology in the Constitution is in order to have a well-regulated militia. You know, the individuals need to have the right to bear arms. So, is the it whole? Tr- it's a confusing thing because you're not even uh, militias aren't even allowed. Like, you can't right. just form a militia. Like, that's a gang. You know, like right. if you if you decide I'm going to form my own militia, you know, and we have to <laughs> fight back against the government in case they try to take in our land. Land. Uh, so I saw that news that uh, where was it? Iowa. Something was happening, and then these guys turned up in a U-Haul. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a saw Iowa? That story about Idaho. That. But yeah, it was a it was a pride parade, uh-huh. and they showed up white supremacist group. It was like group. twenty dudes in a U-Haul. Yeah, with their was thirty one dudes. Mm. It's a thirty one. Yeah, mm-hmm. but here's the thing: they're so they feel like they're so powerful, mm-hmm. right? These guys. Why do they have to freaking walk around with a big ass mask on their face? <laughs> <laughs> and they can't. They don't even have the guts to show their face when they can turn up for all this stuff. I mean, that's it's interesting. I mean, uh, you definitely see a mix of that because, I mean, there's certain events like what happened in Charlottesville that nobody was wearing masks, you know. They were just emboldened enough to right. do what they needed, you know, do what they want. And I just saw the news this morning that one of the one of the guys was, I don't know if he's a leader of the group, uh-huh. his mom kicked him out of the house. <laughs> so he was still living in his mom's basement. <sighs> interesting. But he was a militia leader. Interesting. Okay, the ne- then a question on that. Is it true... When the Second Amendment was written and when the bullet was actually created, uh-huh. after, like years after the Second Amendment, Amendment was written? I mean, they had bullets, but I mean, not They had like uh, musket balls. Shells, but, uh, musket, but musket the balls. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but the, the rifling and the like mm-hmm. kind of bullet that spins and like goes very accurately. Yeah, that's, that was that's in the Civil War, I think, around that time mm-hmm. is when they. So that was after then? Like 100 years almost, yeah. So when the, it was actually written, <laughs> there was no bullet spinning going accurately. Oh, yeah, no question that, like, I mean, what people considered, you know, arms at the time was completely right. different than what you have now. Mm. I mean, you, one person with a certain type of weapon could take over a whole town in that scenario, you know, in that mm-hmm. day and age. If you're a trucker and you own a truck that weighs 55,000 pounds or more, we're here to let you know that it's time to file your Form 2290 again. Thankfully, Express Truck Tax is here to make e-filing easy with a free VIN checker, a scan for common errors, and 100% U.S.-based customer support. Plus, if you file your 2022-23 Form 2290 before June 30th with Express Truck Tax, you'll be automatically entered for a chance to win Denny's gift cards, Blue Parrot headsets, and even a Garmin truck GPS. So go to expresstrucktax.com now to file your 2022-23 Form 2290. All right. What else are we talking about today? Mm. Uh, we got a funny couple interesting stories. UK tribunal rules that calling a man bald is considered sexual harassment. I'm sorry, <laughs> calling a man the B word. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say what was formerly known as. Oh my God, when is, when is this going to end? Well, man? I mean, okay, in the interest of <laughs> men's rights here. So, okay, so I'm a short guy. So now should yeah. I start getting offended if you call me short? I don't know. I mean, maybe I might have to start a campaign on this. I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm sure maybe there's somebody out there who will agree with you. Next time, also next time when we take in a group picture, if any of you has <laughs> asked me to come and stand at the front, I'm going <laughs> to file a lawsuit on you. <laughs> I might complain to the UN. <laughs> <laughs> I need so this is what they spend their time on? Protection for my people. So what is it? This guy, uh, he was, what, did he let go from his job or something like that? And he no, sued them? No, he just filed, this guy filed a complaint. During a workplace argument, his shift supervisor referred to him as a bald something else. Okay, so like, <laughs> to give you an idea, like I could say the word bald right now, <laughs> but I can't say the next word without uh-huh. people getting upset. Um, but bald. question is, was he bald though? <laughs> they called him bald. Do they show any pictures of this guy? So I think, no, I don't know. like Charles, like all three of us sitting in this room, right, we do all we have, have. We're 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 non bald. We're hair positive people. <laughs> hair positive we're, people. We're, <laughs> So if someone called us bald, then we can get upset. But if you're bald, 
what do you say what do you call them like what what is it i mean you could say I mean, that word now it's unusable I mean, it's a descriptive word so it's kind of hard to not use it in certain respects i don't know i guess i guess the idea is it's they compare it to uh commenting on a woman's chest so what <laughs> what are you saying in the they're saying yeah. that calling a man bald is the same as as that it's comparative because what? it's because it's gender <laughs> it's gender based it's gender based descriptors not based on who you are as a person it's more on your <laughs> Strictly so appearance. what if we tell him you're bald, tall, a uh, bald, tall, and handsome? Is oh, that acceptable? You're a beautiful bald man. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful bald man. Would that know. be acceptable? I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, you're going the other way with it, you know. I mean, but now you're crossing a, the line. You're crossing of the like, line, uh, like you being can't too complimentary on, on something. Oh, because um, I mean, you can go one way or the other when you think of it dealing with the opposite gender you know you can't you know it's not appropriate to comment on somebody's appearance in that respect i don't think it's acceptable now or even probably it was not acceptable before to comment on someone's mm-hmm. appearance I, i guess it's a ultimately like a, a very familiar way you know right. like if you're talking to a family member or something right. like that maybe you have a certain way of speaking that's more direct than right. when you're in an office environment right it's, Try right. to keep everything on a professional. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Level. Dude, yeah. I mean, I I know I know what they're saying. I mean, yeah. we're working on cruise ships and here and there. You know, there was stuff that was said about me or every, mm-hmm. about someone else in front of them or behind them. It was just crazy. I yeah, mean, it was just out of control. But uh, good for this guy. So he, well, interestingly enough, it was his shift manager who was also a man who called him. Well, uh, what did he call him? Called you called can bleep it. I called him a bald. <laughs> so listeners take a guess at what it was (laughs) okay that one's kind of wild this next one i think is like almost ridiculous so this is san francisco schools ban the word chief from occupational titles after native american concerns Oh wow! So, so <laughs> when I was on the ship as a photo manager, they changed the thing to chief photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a long time, you know, they What just called it? you chief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just called you. <laughs> And then I'm, I'm, I'm Indian. Yeah. <laughs> so they just started making a joke about it, like yeah. Indian chief. They just called me chief. How do you feel about that as an Indian? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally as a cool. regular Indian. people calling me <laughs> chief. I, I know, I'm totally cool with it. <laughs> uh, But you you meet friends and you go, "What's up, chief? How's it going?" Yeah. Well, the interesting thing, like the word "chief," is not specifically. Native American related. Is, I mean, like yeah. other countries have the word "chief." Like right, but is it chief like a purely English, like a yeah, well, like English the English word, word specifically "chief"? Yeah, is is an English. Is word. there? A, But it goes back beyond. What do they call them in the native language for chief? I don't know. I, I thought you know. were an expert in native language not shows. A, not a, not a, not a, we're just sort of talking about this off mic a moment ago, but um, yeah, funny little story. One time, we'll we'll change the names and protect the innocent and all that sort of thing. But um, <laughs> <laughs> one day, Aggie was talking to somebody. This is regarding like what an upcoming party we were about to have. No, we, we were, we were to, having we were team a, lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and me got the food. It was Mexican mm-hmm. food. Picked up, we got our plates done, and then we sat at the table, which was pretty close to the island where the food was set up. I one of our coworker came in was getting food and we have music in our break room right mm-hmm. so some, some some song was playing i don't know what it was and the young lady started singing that so sort of coming along coming to along. It, sort of mm-hmm. and we we were probably like six, seven feet away from where she was mm. and i said are you a singer but the response and we <laughs> got <laughs> was a full was explanation a full of <laughs> long confusing <laughs> explanation that made you think i don't think she heard me right is the the was the the response was something like well it's it's very hard to date these days and um you know you meet certain types of people and they just they're only after one type of thing and so you know it just sort of went on and on and on right and, and especially and like Ag- online dating and Aggie and i are just looking at each other like what is she talking about what is this about Anyway, it just sort of awkwardly ends. She right. walks away. Right. And then we're still thinking about it. Right. And at one point, I think I said, I think she thought you said, are you single? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not are you a singer? <laughs> anyway, we, we, anyway, we sorted that confusion We sorted out. it out. We explained properly. But I blame everything. it on my accent. Yeah. yeah. Aggie's and my not going around asking people. <laughs> 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 
It, uh, accent gets you in a lot of trouble. It does. <laughs> it does. Also gets you out of trouble too. <laughs> the right scenario. I can always throw around the line. English is not my first language. Yeah, that's I've pretty. used that quite a few times. It has. It has worked, <laughs> but it doesn't work with people I know. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about that, there's a guy on YouTube. I cannot remember his name. Uh, he speaks like s- so many different languages. He walks around New York and New Jersey <laughs> and all, and he goes to like that local, like a Nigerian restaurant or right. a store and starts talking to them in their language. And uh, recently, he, I saw a video of him walking around restaurants in New Jersey and New York and speaking to them in Tamil. Hmm. Uh, I was like, wow, that's pretty it's cool. A little bit. So yeah. that, the guy, apparently, then I watched, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. watched a bunch of videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's on the rabbit hole. I believe he's, uh, his wife is Chinese, so he speaks Mandarin, and that's how he got started. He speaks uh, Swahili, speaks Arabic, uh, obviously speaks Spanish, he, now he speaks Tamil. Pretty cool. Have you guys seen that? I think I've seen this guy before, yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen the most recent one. Yeah, but pretty cool. How was his Tamil, in your opinion? Uh, he was all right. Um, I think what he does, I think I figured it out, Jules. Mm. He only learns part of the language is going to be useful in a restaurant to order food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then he can <laughs> do a video. Yeah. And that's all he learned. But he doesn't know the entire language right, properly. Right, 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 right. I think that's what he's, well, he's doing. But it's pretty cool, though, to still, hear him talk. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? How are we doing with our old uh, podcast thing? I mean, have we got a rhythm going yet? Or we still need to get more drinks going next time so we can open up? <laughs> Now we do Probably have a, like a wine cooler in the podcast room, and uh, I, I just see for some reason only full of water. I don't see any beer in there. <laughs> Maybe I should. I'll bring some of my bourbon collection. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Well, we do have a lot of uh, big things happening here. We cannot um, release any information about that yet. Maybe in the future episodes we can talk about that. Or you can talk about the whole process, like how it went down and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. sounds good. Yeah, and maybe we can, you know, finally talk about Top Gun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, that's good. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, thank you. The Bandit Room is a production of Span Enterprises, located in sunny Rock Hill, South Carolina. We've been developing, supporting, and growing successful IRS e-filing and business management solutions since 2010. Go to SpanEnterprises.com now to learn more. Views and opinions expressed in the Bandit Room are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect or state the opinions of Span Enterprises. No information should be considered as tax, legal, or other professional advice.